have been some strange things sell on eBay over the years. From Justin Bieber's hair clippings selling for over $40,000 in 2011 to a Dorito shaped like the Pope's hat selling for $1,200 in 2005, it's safe to say that you could sell almost anything on eBay. And in this video today, what I wanted to do is break down 12 unexpected items that you've probably got lying around the house that actually goes on to sell for some really good money on eBay. So the first item is the scientific calculators. Now, a couple of years ago, I picked up one of these for just a dollar at a garage sale and I was shocked to see the value on eBay was in the hundreds. Depending on which make and model you have, you can generally rely on a few hundred bucks. And a couple of the brands that have worked really well for me in the past have been HP and Casio. I believe it's a schooling requirement for every student when they're in high school to have a scientific calculator. Um, so these are a very commonly purchased item on eBay, but they're also equally a very commonly found item at garage sales or flea markets for around a couple of dollars. So you're talking very, very big profits for a category that potentially after high school, you would probably neglect and discard. Do you remember the old school Nokia 3315, the one you used to play snakes and ladders on? Well, they sell for some really good money on eBay. Vintage mobile phones, it's another category to pay attention to. We've all got our old iPhones lying around the house once we've upgraded to the next generation and they could actually sell for 50, 60, 70 bucks on eBay. I personally got into that when I very first started selling three years ago on eBay. I opened up the cupboards around the house and I saw an old iPhone 4S and I went on to sell that for $40 on eBay. But I realized that I could have actually nowadays got about 70 or 80 bucks. So it's definitely a really good category to focus on. There's constantly new phones and new technology coming up, but you've got to pay attention to the old stuff because Nokia, Motorola, there's some big, big comps on eBay talking hundreds of dollars worth. I was at the flea market a couple of months ago talking to a vendor and he was actually a full-blown coin collector. Apparently the coin collecting niche is a big one and I didn't realize it at the time but I jumped into eBay and I did my research as I always do and I found out these a couple of results. The first one was this 1977 Queen's Silver Jubilee 50 cent coin selling for two and a half thousand dollars. It's a rare historical coin but it needs to be dated 1977. Check this one out here as well. We've got a two dollar coin um, so Queen Elizabeth coin, a standard coin, but there is an initial HH on the front, and I believe even on the back of the coin as well. It is tiny, but that coin, if you can find the HH initial, sells for eight thousand dollars now these are pretty crazy examples two and a half grand eight grand we're talking one single coin but there is multiple examples of different coins out there that are quite rare and therefore hold a significant value on ebay if you know about it and then obviously can find it so the coin game is a big one to play in i didn't know about it i still don't really know too much about it but maybe i should start paying attention and maybe you should too to what you've got in your wallet now the sell through rate of this next category is quite literally insane. You've got opportunities to be able to sell these on the very same day that you buy them and list them up for sale uh, for hundreds of dollars. We're talking the player issued football jerseys across all codes. It's always dependent upon the player that you've got. You've often got the number on the back, which is a dead giveaway for which player that was. Uh, per the sponsorship branding that you see on the jerseys, you can often marry it up to a certain year, and that will obviously give you the player name based on the number. But you're really looking for the GPS pouches on the back. There's often a little bit of an extra cut in the jersey to allow for a GPS to go in there, and they don't sell that sort of stuff retail. So that's the one thing that I'm looking for when I'm out and about in the thrift stores is for that GPS pouch. And I have found about five or six of them, and I've been able to sell them between $200 to $500 a piece and as I mentioned on the very same day. So this is a huge category. The collectors out there for these player issued jerseys is actually really quite phenomenal. They'll pay some significant dollars and they are always searching for these things on a daily basis. So play in the sports category. A lot of passionate fans out there for these teams and these players and you can give yourself a sale pretty much immediately with this one. I uncovered the world of this next category at a Bucks party of all places. It was the Bucks old man that I was talking to over a few beers a couple of weeks ago and I told him a bit about what I was doing as an eBay seller and he said that he's flipped a few of this next category himself for some wild money. We're talking axes. Yep, axes. He's gone ahead and sold a bunch of these because he's inherited a lot of these from the family uh, over the last few years. And he's really delved into it. He's learned a lot about it and he's actually doing a lot of refurbing as well. So he's doing it up and polishing it up, getting it into its best condition and then selling it for four, five, six hundred dollars a piece. Now, I know absolutely nothing about axes, but when I do my research on eBay, I can see that he's 100% not wrong. There are some fantastic sales going down in the category. I did ask him though, I said, what are the three best brands to look out for, for the purpose of this video? And he said Heightest was really good. He said Keysteel and Plum. 
they were the three categories that he mentioned. He said anything that is older, big five pound axes, he said we're doing really well on eBay. And he said anything with an embedded four, four and a half or five stamp is great. I don't know what that means, but if you're into that sort of thing, you might be able to take some good info away to be able to sell a few of yours if you've got them lying around the house. But axes, who knew? This next one though, I have known about for quite some time and I've had some really good success and I know that a lot of other people don't know about it. So here's a bit of a secret. Empty boxes, they sell fantastically well. A couple of examples of what I've been able to sell uh, has been the iPhone uh, or the Apple Mac box, um, anything sort of Apple related. People love to collect that sort of stuff. Um, but video games as well is a huge category. There's a StarCraft Nintendo 64 uh, box and manual only selling for about $1,100 I think on eBay. Um, that has actually got on to sell. So that, that just shows you the, of the, the collectible nature of what a box can bring. Um, at a smaller level, I'm always picking up empty boxes of really popular video games at around the $20 to $30 a piece. So I think a lot of times with those sorts of things, people will just see a box and they'll just throw it out. But I know even for a shoe or a sneaker collector, they're, they're going to really want that box. And that's going to go a long way to completing their set of that shoe if they've got the original box for it. So there's a lot of different categories out there that if you've got a really good minty condition box of that certain item um, still listed up for sale make sure you're obviously putting it in as box only or box and manual only uh, and you'll be crazy it'll be crazy numbers on there that i've been able to sell i dove into this next category a couple of weeks ago uh, off a, a reel that i saw from gary v he put it up saying that somebody was curious to see what could sell on ebay and he said literally anything salt and pepper shakers he used as an example I didn't realize that vintage salt and pepper shakers can sell for so much money. There's a few hundred dollars in it, depending on which one you have. Like any category that we're talking about here, guys, it is all based around the knowledge of what you have. Little discrepancies can go a very long way, and a salt and pepper shaker is a perfect example of that. Certain ones, talking hundreds of bucks, put it on your list. Now, personally for me as a seller, this next car item or category uh, is one that I'm always looking for, but in three and a half years, I've actually never found it. And it's really frustrating because I know how much they're worth. Vintage surf hats is what I'm talking about. Now, I love my hats. I sell a lot of them on eBay. I'm a big Lids fan. I wear them every single day myself. Uh, so I know which ones are good and which ones aren't. I've got a really good eye for it, but these surf hats, these Billabong, Quicksilver, Rip Curl, corduroy surf hats i know we're getting pretty intricate there and pretty uh descriptive but they are the hats those are the ones that go for hundreds of dollars there's a billabong surf hat that i believe is up on ebay sold for two hundred dollars it's a really nice corduroy as well and they're often made in the 90s the old school 90s surf gear that i personally used to wear as a kid growing up i just wish i held on to all that stuff that i used to have but that's a massive category i'm still looking for it and geez i'll make a full dedicated video on youtube when i do find one now, one of the tough parts of selling on eBay and trying to find these products to sell is you often come across them that are damaged, they're faulty, they don't work, but you can still sell them on eBay and they do sell for some good coin. Um, a couple of examples of this for me in the past have been recently a Game Boy that I picked up, completely corroded battery pack. I won't go into it, but I could have cleaned it up and fixed it. Apparently, there's a way to fix corrosion uh, in general. I didn't know about it. So I just sold mine as faulty. I titled, descriptioned, gave the photos, everything like that. And I sold it for half the price of what it was actually worth. But I would have personally deemed that three years ago as completely worthless. I would have said $0. But this $120 Game Boy went on to sell for $60, and I was able to get a parts-only sale. Uh, you see this commonly with uh, things in the in DVD space, for instance. I've always sold the DVD recorders at uh, the converters from DVD to VHS, they sell for hundreds of dollars, but you can also sell them for parts only for a few hundred dollars as well. Um, so yeah, really good category to kind of just pay attention to in the electronics that even if it is broken, depending on what you've got, it still might be worth a bit. This is a very random, obscure one, but Reese's plumbing t-shirts here in Australia can sell for upwards of $40 to $45. Super strange, don't know why, it is just a plain t-shirt that says Reese's plumbing on it. Uh, and they sell every time. The navy blues are the color to try and find. Try and find the navy blue Reese's plumbing. I find these in thrift stores for a dollar. And I've sold probably about four or five of them over the last couple of years. Um, don't often come across them. They are just a tradey t-shirt. But this is something that literally everyone would neglect if they were into the clothing game. Um, it's one that I wanted to put into the video because it is a bit of an obscure one. And if you find it, you can guarantee yourself $40. The sell-through rate, 48 listed, I think is about 65 sold currently on eBay.
Not surprisingly, I found out about this category down at the flea market, and I really highly recommend you guys get out to your local flea and get really inquisitive with your local vendors. Ask some questions. It's where I found out about the uh, the coins, as I touched on earlier, and it's also where I found out about the vintage car magazines. I bought a bundle of 100 just randomly because I wanted to experience the category, and I jumped onto eBay, I did my research, and I ended up selling them in bundled allotments per the decade. So there were a lot of 70s, 80s, and 90s, and it was the same uh, magazine title. And I basically sold them off for five bucks a piece, and I had about 10 years worth there. So I was able to sell them for $50 a pop, and I had quite a lot of different decades to sell. So this made me some significant money. And when I went into the category to have a bit of a look for the purpose of this video, there were certain copies, again, rare copies, little indiscrepancies that caused the value to skyrocket. And those are some really good categories to focus on. Here's a good one here um, that was selling for over $100 as a perfect example. So look, it's a unique one. Uh, a lot of car collectors out there, a lot of, a lot of people that love their cars, right? Um, so vintage car magazines, makes sense. Now, normally when you see expired, you tend to toss it out, right? But there's one category here where expiry dates do not matter. And I'm talking about printer ink. You can actually sell this stuff pretty commonly on eBay and the dollars are actually quite good. So I was looking into this when I found some lying around the house back when I very first started. I haven't got into the category too much since, albeit I know that some really good coin can be made out of it. Uh, I just don't come across it too much. It's not in my wheelhouse of what I try to sell. DVDs and shoes are sort of the main categories. Uh, but this expired printer ink, having a look on eBay, looking at the, the sold comps, there are so many sales with expiry all over the title. Um, so if you've got some lying around the house, have a look into it. All the major brands are selling, even expired. Now, it's all well and good to know about these 12 unexpected items that actually sell on eBay every single day for significant money. But if you don't know how to list it, how to take great photos, how to price it correctly, how to then obviously ship it off once it does go on to sell, you're not going to be able to get the returns that we've been able to talk about in this video. So I've made a beginner's guide right here. It'd be fantastic for you to check out if you're new to the eBay game. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed this little video today. Appreciate you tuning in. Remember to subscribe if you're into this sort of thing. We'll see you soon.